A complete Power BI tutorial where I'm going to discuss each and every basic concepts in Power BI development and once you have completed this video you will be in a position to create your own Power BI reports you can be having any experience you can be a beginner or intermediate or pro I recommend watching this video what contents or topics I'm going to cover in this video let me walk you through this like I will start with the uh, introduction and architecture and I will explain with the business scenario where I'm going to discuss uh, like um, one of the business scenario for which we are going to do all other parts like power query how ETL can be done and um, cleansing merging and power bi modeling and moving on to dax reports dashboard creation and in dashboard creation what are the different topics for that business once we develop the report then we will publish the reports in the services and schedule how the data will be scheduled then we'll summarize the whatever we have done so far so this is what the plan once we have done this in my next part of the video I'm going to cover the advanced topics like row level security premium per user deployment pipelines data flows incremental refresh page generated reports and we will summarize some of the other important topics in the advanced topic so with this note let us try to begin our today's topic if you are new to this channel, hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon for notification. So let's begin with what is Power BI. So it is the business intelligence reporting tool and it is used to create the visualization reports and dashboard. So basically Power BI is meant for creating the reports and dashboard. So this is the point I want to clear and it is fully interactive reporting unlike other reporting or conventional reporting where one visual not impact the other visual power bi is a fully interactive the visual you are uh, want to filter it will reflect another visual as well while demonstrating the reports power bi reports you will understand what do you mean by interactive and it is used to bridge the gap between data and decision making so the main purpose of visualization is to get insights out of your data so this is why people go for this power bi tool and share report with users for collaboration with a secure way and this is another important factor the conventional reporting lack of uh, collaboration and sharing the reports to the user in a secure way so these are the reasons people go for power bi and this is what a power bi is people often confuse with power bi with the data entry applications or some process automation there is no part in power bi related to process automation this is only a reporting tool maybe in case of process automation power bi can play a small role in it right to show the status or reports apart from that there is uh, it is not typically meant for any other main purpose the main purpose of power bi is reports and dashboard creation with this note let's move on to the architecture of power bi so basically power bi contains uh, three different parts one is power bi desktop it is completely free right anybody can download the desktop without any user login or any other credentials required just go to microsoft website and you can download and install it then there is a second part in power bi which is called power bi services where you will have uh, your reports once you develop your reports you will publish it into cloud right you will publish it in the cloud where you can able to share the reports to the other users and in order to get the data from on-premise to cloud to 
or you need a gateways this is another concept behind how uh, data can be refreshed between uh, uh, on-premise and cloud servers once you are done, you can access the report using a web browser or using some mobile applications. So this is the entire arg architecture of Power BI. You have desktop for uh, creating or authoring, we can say, and for Power BI services for sharing and collaboration. Then you have uh, client applications like web browsers, mobile applications to access the reports. Let's jump deep dive into power bi desktop we will continue the architecture how a power bi desktop is evolved basically it contains the three components power query power pivot and power map so what are these things earlier this was in 2011 or 2010 early uh, 2011 i think so these are came as add-ons in the excel power query is for cleaning your data because you have a data is not apt for reporting you need to clean it or blend it or you need to convert it in some other way right so you need some transformation of your data power query does that job once you have done you have a data in different formats or different places and then you have to create interactivity or you need to pre-aggregate the data to create the model whatever your business logics has to be defined somewhere the calculations or your core uh, business functionalities right so those things has to be written here and also this also involve connecting different tables there are different parts in it creating relationship and creating your calculations right based on your business your calculations will differ so those calculations or modeling is called power pivot which will be stored in a separate tool so this is part of the excel i'm saying about then while creating the reports you have uh, many um, tools like um, power map to create your visuals like uh, charts and you can use the power map like uh, for uh, geographical data and question and question and answer it's a natural language processing concept like um, you can ask your question then power bi will return the answer so these are different add-ons available as a uh, in excel now microsoft came up with a smart way like as a end tool they combined all these three different tools in a single powerful tool called power bi and everything is available in the power bi desktop right so whether you can create all the reports in the online no you cannot create the modeling part in online but you can able to quickly create the report in power bi server using some copy and paste uh, that is a uh, different story but for you to understand where you will create the reports you will create in power bi desktop the power bi desktop is a combination of three tools power query power pivot and power map so the i explained all these things what are those and let us deep dive into this in our pre upcoming sessions for you to understand um, what is power bi services what i am trying to explain is like this is the overall architecture in power bi desktop we have uh, three parts and in power bi services when you have a power bi services you have someone do not believe in cloud as i said the power bi reports once you create in desktop this has to be published to the cloud that is a software as a service provider i mean software as a service in case of um, microsoft so whatever reports you create that will be deployed in the cloud server that so some people do not wish their data to be stored in the cloud what will happen to them so how microsoft has to tackle this so that is why they introduced a new concept called they gave the whatever report server they follow it here in some simplified way 
and organizations they can install the power bi report server on their environment so they can create the report similarly how we create in power bi desktop and then instead of deploying in the power bi services cloud they can deploy it in their own server then accessing mechanism remains same if they expose this uh, server outside they can access from the outside or within the organization uh, limits access limits they can access using web browsers or mobile application so this is one of the core difference you need to understand and one point to highlight is like the power bi desktop authoring tool is different for the report server as well as for the cloud so when you are downloading power bi desktop mostly it will prompt you to the cloud version if you are specifically need for on premise you need to mention it power bi desktop optimized for on premise so this is the separate flow people will follow they, those who do not want to share the data in the cloud they will follow this so there are licensing terms other things will come after uh, our uh, understanding about power bi and we will discuss that later let's try to understand one business scenario and for this business we are going to build a power bi dashboard this naga garments business running the garments shop in three locations one is chennai bangalore and hyderabad and they are selling 10 products in four categories casual wear semi formal formal and accessories for this business they generate some data and we are going to build a dashboard and how this dashboard will help them to improve the business that is what we are going to see in this entire video tutorial and i want to split it into two like initially i will start creating a dashboard in couple of minutes five to ten minutes uh, with improper way or with the not having a proper modeling concept then once after we finish the simple dashboard creation then we will move on to the core concepts in power bi how a properly we need to build a dashboard let's begin with our simple dashboard creation let's try to launch the power bi now so if you do not know how to install the power bi desktop or what are the things you need just go and watch my power bi complete playlist where i have from the beginning how to download the power bi how to start everything i've explained so now we are in power bi and you can see here there are different ways to get the data inside power bi the one of the simplest way is to choose so if your data is excel our SQL Server, you can choose this one because these are the most 90% of the um, sources will be available. And if your data source is apart from these, you can go for this get data and choose more option. So as we pointed out before, as Power BI can able to connect uh, data more than um, 90 plus sources like 100 plus sources basically so if it is your file system you can able to read it from excel text everything and you it can able to connect to different databases as well and it can also able to connect to azure and online services so today's demo we will stick to excel we'll connect it so this is the naga garment sample and let me walk through it in the power bi itself as we already said so you can see this particular data and this is the where you can preview your data uh, whether whatever data you're going to load is the actual data or not right because you mistakenly if you choose some other data it's no point in developing it so just a preview whether this is what you want to load so this data you can see receipt number you have a location customer name and session id sales date order type whether it's online or order line i mean offline then what is the product name then 
the quantity and sales amount what is the selling price so this is typical uh, sales transaction data containing which location it has sold who has brought it and uh, the which time and date uh, there is no time here but only restricting to date now and you have the order type name so this is what we are going to load we are not focusing on other data right now as we are building a simple dashboard uh, to understand how quickly you can create so let's try to load it so as soon as you load it you need to understand uh, other things over here like the three tabs over here this is the report tab where you actually create your reports and you have your uh, data tab where you can able to see your data okay let me rename it to sales okay sales table so you can see your uh, other tables when you import multiple tables you can able to click on it and see the data this is applicable only if you have a import mode that i will come to that later now you can see here the uh, modeling tab where you have multiple tables and you will create the relationship this is also we will cover it later now how quickly you can create the report that is the point before going to that now you can see the sigma symbol or this symbol indicates these are the numerical field which can be aggregatable like over here the quantity you can see the data type the whole number okay and you can see what is the different aggregations you can be able to do some people want uh, some measures based on their business they need the average value right so here always the default value is sum so similarly sales amount and uh, other numerical fields even session id cannot be aggregated okay so still it is a numerical value that is why you got the value as sum over here it doesn't matter for us now other fields over here like customer name is available as text which is having a value as text so it's whose default aggregation will be do not summarize so this is the core basics and how you can start creating the report so basically we will focus on two things one is what is the total sales amount and how many quantities sold across different dimensions or different perspectives so to do that i want to see what is my total sales amount for that just drag this card this is the card visual and you can choose the sales amount now this is the sales amount again you click on the card and drag and drop at the top then i want the quantity so you can see here as soon as you choose the card the visual and the aggregatable column the values are appearing quickly now when you click on it i will choose the customer name it will not it will not actually show the aggregated well, total customers it will instead show the first customer name what is the available in the first place it will show to you so this is not meant for the non numerical field so let us delete that now having seeing this total value right so it's amount and quantity and doesn't make any sense to me because the total sales for the entire year meaning like whenever this business is started from that date till this date the total sales amount is 6 million so i want to split by year or what are the different products sold or whether it's online or offline right so that is what you call it as slice slice your data okay so now let me introduce this uh, chart that is bar chart column chart you can call it and you see a uh, sale data okay i will choose the date and i will choose the sales amount so click on it automatically it will be populated you can see 2016 17 18 let me increase the size of uh, all this um, column or uh, values so that it will be easy to view so this is sales amount and this is i can 
do the copy paste here so that it will be easy to understand even I will increase the size over here be with me so where is that size text size okay this is fine so and also you want to see the label this is called uh, label here i mean data label the later data label is not appearing now you can enable it so that it is appearing and i will change the font size as well for this as well so everything is shown in millions if you do not wish to show in millions you can uh, disable the value as display units none so that it will show the actual value now again i can able to view add some slices to it so i can add this location so that location wise i want to split the data or i want to focus only on the location right only i want to focus on bangalore what is happening i can filter it now one last visual i will add it here like i will add by online or order type so i have added online or order type and here i instead sales quantity sales amount i will add the sales quantity so this particular report can be used for your quick analysis or overall status as well this can also be considered as a dashboard also there is no uh, point like saying this is typically in technical terms in power bi perspective this is the report and dashboard can be created in power bi services but few people or people those want to have the analysis the meaning of dashboard is like you it is like you can pin the charts from different uh, reports okay that is the main concept behind the dashboard but if you have only one report then this also can be considered as a dashboard we will talk more about that later but for you this can be considered as a report or a dashboard now coming back to our topic so i will quickly change other property here this is the background for the uh, page now it will look little better so this is not uh, uh, designed in a very proper way but you can see here this is just like a dashboard i mean a sim simple report it shows a different uh, perspective of your data what it indicates to me let me increase this property also so that um, we can discuss what insights we i got from this uh, data and i will increase the uh, legend okay this is fine now you can clearly from this diagram you can see here the total online order is 364 okay so compared to the uh, on shop order so the quickly you can see like your online ordering is not happening that much meaning like if you are spending more money on uh, inter, uh, internet I, i'm not in the internet i'm saying website creation or uh, you are owning domain name all those things but you are not at all getting the order there is no point in maintaining it right so either you need to push people to buy online from your perspective giving a discount when you purchase online so that whatever investment you made that is making worth or you entirely close this online order because no one is preferring in online okay that insight you can quickly get and from here there is a increase in sales during 2017 compared to 16 whereas in 2018 there is a decline so your big business is declining and you see this is the lowest sales ever since you started so there is something you need to intervene here otherwise your business will collapse this gives a clear warning like your business is decreasing right so uh, seeing these things will indicate you something is happening this is what uh, insight is all about i mean quickly you can able to understand what is happening so let us stop this one uh, with what our kind of insights you will get and i have just created this report to show you how quickly you can create the dashboards or reports now one point to hi highlight is like this entire report is fully interactive like when you click on 2016 
you can see here this entire report is filtered for this filter 2016 even along with that Bangalore now it, what it indicates to me is like in 2016 in Bangalore what is my total sales amount and if you highlight it in Bangalore in 2016 in online order how much it is the highlighted value is 45 so this is how you can able to control the uh, you also able to control the interactivity I will show it later part of the video but you can see the entire report is interactive even you click on this visual and other visuals will filter and if you click on this one other visuals will filter this is I hope uh, you are clear with how quickly you can create uh, reports in power bi and in our next part of the video how properly you can create the reports in power bi in our previous session we have seen a business scenario and how quickly we can create the report so it is not as simple as that you can create a report but this applicable when there is no complex uh, scenarios or any kind of um, data transformation required if your data is very much clean and th whatever we have created in our previous scenario it that works good but it is not always the case we sometimes we need to clean the data you need to convert it in the format that requires for the report to be used right so for that we need to use the etl or transform your data using the power query that is what we are going to focus in this session let's begin now we have seen this uh, simple dashboard and for this business for the Naga garments business what he needs to find out is like he wants to see whether the products whatever he is selling it's a brand or non-brand the logic he has in his mind is like whichever is having a brand right that is having a gene space denim gene space lega so these are the brands whichever doesn't have any second name right that is non-brand so he wants to have a new column whichever having uh, two space names i mean two uh, two names first name and last name then that is called a branded if doesn't have a second name then it is called unbranded that is the logic he wants to implement so where you need to implement all this kind of stuff is like using a power query that is where you will use the transform your data now going to that will be simple just click on this uh, edit then transform data so before loading into power bi the data itself we can do the transform your data as well that i will show it later but once you loaded you can go back again now first thing before implementing that logic we will remove the unwanted columns that is a good practice for uh, performance improvement this session id doesn't make any sense to me toward this uh, analysis so i can remove this and also uh, the selling price doesn't have any impact so I will remove that as well so it is always good to remove some of the unwanted columns just you can use it over here then to implement the logic like branded or unbranded so we can have um, split of this uh, column first of all like uh, jeans Levis or I mean how you can split using a space right so first we will do the duplicate of this column okay so what we can do is right click on it duplicate a column then here you no need to write most of the formulas most of the things will be available as uh, uh, just uh, right click and you get something uh, whatever you want to do you can do it what logic we can implement here what i'm trying to say here is like to get branded and unbranded i need to split this uh, second column right i mean second value genes lewis into a new column for that 
there is a concept called split column by delimiter okay this is the option i am preferring so when you choose that one you use the space by default it has detected space between the rows so you choose space if it is something else you can choose that one so each occurrence yes you just say yes then you can see here the product name is split up into two here you can see this is the brand name right peter and land levius everything and some of the column that doesn't have the name itself i mean to say like um, this t-shirt doesn't have the brand name okay so this is the catch so if there is any entry in this column then it is considered as branded and if there is no entry then it is considered as the unbranded that is the logic we are going to write so let us try to remove all other unwanted columns and then i again start writing that logic let's go here and what i need to do here is like um, i can go to add column and custom column or conditional column you can say if the product name column 4 is equals null okay then unbranded so this is how you can write it or if there is uh, it is um, not null then you can say brand you can see everything is brand here and you can see some of them are unbranded because that t-shirt doesn't have a secondary name and it is called unbranded so we achieved the logic over here so this is how you can um, clear the remove empty so sorry I am filtering unwanted things so this is the column we want we can name it as brand is branded okay something like that you can rename the column easily so this is one kind of uh, simple uh, transformation we are looking for and also you can change the data types if required as you can see here this is the whole number and this is whole number you want to change the data type to a decimal number or some other uh, bit or some other values then you can do it right now over here this is the one of the example i want to highlight over here then let's try to understand this and we will close this one and we will see how it will reflect over here so instead of um, these two order type i mean order type i will i can make use of the is branded uh, column now i will uh, let us try to keep this one over here and same thing i can keep it here and i can use the here i can remove this one and i can use the legend so branded and branded so unbranded branded contributes the more like over 65 percentage of the products sold are branded and you can see the unbranded is 34 percentage so this is one typical example of your etl process then another important uh, thing i want to highlight over here when you can go for we i'm going to explain the two scenarios now we have a customer name here and we do not know the what is the uh, gender for this particular customer name and i wish to have the gender right i want to analyze the gender of that customer so how i can get that gender over here right since i do not have any gender here i have but in my data i am maintaining the customer information where i have the gender right male and female so in those cases i need to join the data from the customer to the i mean to say the customer in the sales table 
in order to get this extra information for the customer right expand this table i need to use the match that is where you will go for match let me explain it to you again now go to transform data this is one of the scenario i am i want to explain it to you now the customer name is there but for the related information the additional information available in the another table for that i need to expand this table so again you go to the source excel workbook or you can either go to the recent source you can click on this then in this case i will bring the data customer data now over here when i click on it it will be loaded here right now you need to understand the fact that i'm not bringing this table as such in the analysis this is one layer that is power query layer and here i am bringing only the extra column in the customer name so i am merging this table from here so you can go for match queries match so choose that column from the sales table then from here i can choose the customer table then again choose what are the matching column here naga magesh here so you can see these many rows are matching some of the rows are not matching we will talk about that later how to handle it and once you click on it you are expanding the table you can see this table whatever matching happening here that will be expanded for each row you can see another column so entire table appears in the sales table but we do not interested in all the columns we need only the gender so i will remove this and use the gender column so here again this particular customer that is so you can see sunil is not available in the customer table that is why you have the blanks here so we will leave this uh, person as such or what you can do is like gender if you do not know you can mention it as not available so how you can do it like you can go here and replace nulls okay replace values you can press null as not available or not provided you can consider as na na means that gender is not available for that customer again you can um, make this one as m as male and f as female this is also kind of transformation we can further do it or we can stick to this as well so how you can do it again go to add column and you can say conditional column and you can see here if the gender equals m then male add clause if else if gender equals um, f then female right uh, let's make it as caps and also here f that's it so if it is else class then you can choose the same column if it is male or not male select a column the same column you need to choose it over here now once you click on it you can see the custom male female na so this is the actual gender gender underscore one or uh, gender latest okay you can name it final or whatever you wish you can delete this stuff you can keep only this one so now there is no point in adding this additional table in the reporting layer i can hide this one so if you need only one information then you can add that column only over here right so this is fair enough this is not the proper way i will tell you what are the disadvantages while i am coming or explaining in this task schema now to understand the match columns or match statement i have explained this to you now once you click on it just close then you can see a sales table appearing here only the sales table since i have not loaded the customer table your gender column will appear over here so instead of uh, this 
I can also choose the gender as my filter so gender list that's it so in female this is the count and male this is the count and in a someone who has not yet provided so this is how you can add the data so these are some of the examples you can transform your data and one last example i want to highlight is like where you want to append your data so to understand um, when to use append let's try to understand some of the business scenario where this is naga government's business running the shop in three locations and he has started a new location called surampet where this particular location is not connected to internet so this is like offline shop where you will get only the data in excel where these three locations are um, a kind of um, online i mean to say like uh, c having a point of sale system and the data is being generated and all these three location uses the same software whereas this particular location giving the data in excel so you have two different locations data i mean uh, not location two different sources of data one from point of sales these three location another from the excel so y y there is no point in creating a dashboard for these three location from point of sales and for creating the data i mean dashboard separately for the disconnected um, locations so you need to merge these two data then you need to go for append so now it becomes a uh, four locations so that is fine now going back over here how we can do it so to clarify once again the append you have 100 records in this table and you have from suram pit 50 records the same kind of transaction then at the end after append you will have 150 records whereas match you have 100 records for this 100 records you will have another column like expanded table for it that is what the difference between match and append now uh, to bring that data first uh, the suram paid data let me go to excel and small town and um, bring that data first and let's see what was uh, other issues we will face here so this is the data you can see the location is stamped put to single location that is suram paid let's click on it okay and i will name it as a small town now this is fine and you can see here as soon as you click here and you do the append it will you cannot append it right now i will tell you why you choose a small town then click on okay it will throw you error or uh, you can see some of the unwanted columns also present you remember like we have deleted the uh, some of the column session id and selling price unit so those columns before append you need to delete it that will be a optimal one so you have appended here so let us try to remove it once again then you can do the um, um, append over here like one one second here what i will do you can delete this uh, session id as well as the selling price per unit so these two are deleted and one more thing to highlight is like after you apply these formulas like calculating uh, male gender branded you are appending this data okay i mean when you do the append now it will whatever you have up, uh, applied for the sales table like till this gender branded is applied then after that you are appending so these two new columns will not be applicable to small town what i'm trying to say let us try to append it i'm appending and you see small town when you click on it it is appended but when you go and see the location here let's refresh it you will get a suram pet and you can see the brand and gender is not available since after computing these columns you are appended this so you need to append 
this uh, small town before you do the merge or append steps right i mean before you do the merge or derived column as soon as you import the table you need to append it i hope you get it what i'm trying to say let's skip this one for now or i can uh, do the uh, append at the early stage so what i'm saying you can go to source then navigate promoted headers then remove columns then duplicated column what is this so in this step you need to append it now you can do the append now when you press append insert a step here so this is how you can navigate between these two columns now you choose the small town now now you have appended after this you are saying after this step you apply all the steps so now you go and check at the last step now even the suram pet will get the branded and unbranded so it is very important to know like um, where to apply when to apply those steps now you go to suram pet now you see branded and gender appended because you appended beginning then all other steps you perform later in this sales step so this is another important factor i want to highlight once you appended this table is no more required that is why you no need to have this table as well once you click on ok click on ok over here then we are loading the data here you can quickly see the data will get increased here and let's see what was the issue we should not get shocks let's see what was it i think the data types got changed that is the issue let's go and see it why it has got changed so as soon as you append it there is some changes happen you ensure that uh, it is happening like that so here you can see the data type got changed you change data type to whole number here also whole number then it's fine so you should not get shocks uh, as you are doing the development all these things are quite normal and you need to uh, ensure that what is happening even you see the date format is uh, changed so you go and change your data type over here so that it will appear properly so here change type uh, you can see the change type to date there you go so it is not always happen like that i mean um, because of the source is excel and you are getting it from different uh, dates so that is why it happened now once you uncheck and click it again you can see the data once again so let's see what's happening again i hope uh, i have filtered the data in the sales i need to uncheck it at the last step filter rows this is now more required this filter rows so it happens usually so this is how you can troubleshoot it you need to remember what you are doing and you can easily fix those issues there you go now everything is fine once again you get the data here you get the suram pet data you suram pet data is 38k and there are 38 quantities sold so it has been recently um started so that is why i hope uh, you understand this concept and how you can able to do you are transforming your data either it's a match or append or you create a new column changing the data times all these things considered as you are transforming your data where you will perform you will perform it in the power query so in our next session we will talk about power bi modeling let's start uh, understanding about power bi modeling what do you mean by modeling and the ultimate aim of modeling is to build a star schema why it is important how it is useful then we will discuss other topics in modeling to begin with let's try to understand what do you mean by fat model and for that we are in power bi now and as you can see here this is the only sales table we have brought into this reporting layer where from this 
table itself we have built this dashboard correct and in order to get some information for the customer what what we have brought we have a customer here where is his gender right in order to find his gender we have joined or merged this table the customer information table because the customer gender is available in the customer table for this particular customer what is the gender that is not available in the sales table to bring the gender we have joined it okay joined it and we have included as part of this table you can see here as a gender and since we only interested in gender we are not interested in other columns we have hidden this table no need to load it that is the concept behind a fat table so whatever you require if you expand keep expanding this table that is called a fat model we will try to understand much about it in this example so what do you mean by fat model where you can see here the similar example where you have a receipt number and a location and we have a customer name right and customer all the customer informations assuming you have everything in your sales fact table itself sales table itself even also for the product table all the information is present in the sales table itself right and these are the different measures what is the problem here is like you can see the naga whenever naga does the transaction all his information are getting repeated so naga customer gst mobile number customer email this information is not going to change frequently right so this information are uh, keep on repeating but what we need only if we tag only the customer name and whatever information is not going to change frequently or even if it changes we can maintain this in the customer dedicated table so that his information won't get repeated here that is in that way you can save lot of space in this table the same applicable to your product table so whenever you purchase a product only the product reference should be re reference all other related attributes should not be maintained in the same table okay so that is what the fat model is and what are the disadvantages data is repeated memory consumption is more here and performance will be definitely impacted so what is star schema then so from this if you have anything in the fat model all the information given in a single uh, table it is advised to split into a different table called modeling called a uh, star schema give me a minute I need to present it in a full screen. Not sure why it's uh, not appearing. Okay, now it's fine. Where are we? We are in star schema. There you go. So, what is star schema? Is like you have your fact table where only the reference of your master information you can see only the customer name the customer name should be present in your fact table and your customer information the other information like gst number mobile email everything to be maintained in the master table so for each customer you will maintain only one record so whenever if the user does the transaction 100 times 100 times only the name is uh, repeated is other information are not repeated here same manner for product you have uh, your product name reference and other information product category size so you will have only one single record maintained so what are these uh, surrounded table of your fact table or main table is like these are called the dimension table where you maintain a single record for an entity entity can be anything if in case of products for each product you will maintain only one record that product name or id should uniquely identify that product okay that should be a primary key of the table so in case of excel and all you will not say it's a primary key but you should have a unique column here so this table dimension table have one to many relationship 
meaning this table have one record per product whereas in a fact table it can contain many records meaning like a customer can brought a single product and another customer can brought the same product so one record over here it can have many records in this table that is what one to many so when you maintain it like this whatever you use this dimension is used in the slices or you can use it in different uh, charts so everything will be filtered from this table to here so this is the direction you will provide this is the best optimal way you need to design your power bi reports when you maintain it like this you are um, if you have a huge data set you will definitely find an impact but once you have a huge data set if you design your model in a star schema then it will give you very good performance in real world scenario you will not have the names alone instead you can have ids product id customer id date key something like that uh, when you try to convert it when you co connect to the databases this is the about star schema how we can implement it now let us try to check it out in we are in uh, power bi now like um, what i'm trying to explain it here is like we are uh, enable this uh, customer as a load now so now if you go to power bi here we have a single table here once you apply it the customer will be appearing here so you it will automatically detect it because that names are same and you can see the one to many relationship meaning like this customer will have one record per customer row in this table and you can have a many records in the sales table the mahesh has brought to so many products here right so that is what one to many relationship so i can bring other tables uh, over here so let me uh, pull in uh, other uh, tables uh, over here products naga garments and i will bring the product and date dimension for now so this is the product and i i will bring uh, other tables uh, later now this is the product table over here let me bring it and you can see here this is the unique name i mean for each product but as i pointed out earlier there are certain things you need to change i mean like um, always it is not simple in excel people will maintain it like this so uh, using power query we can fix this this is another kind of uh, issues we will face it in the data transformation we this is also called of data cleansing exercise so what we can do is like for in case of power bi you need to have each row to be filled right we cannot detect so if you want to fill uh, casual year these four products has to be applied right in case of excel people will maintain it like this uh, once you fill a uh, casual year and they will keep this one merged so it is appearing like that but power bi it will not work for each row you need to have some values then only a filtering will work properly so to fill it there is easy option you can have a fill up and down in case of here we need to fill down okay that is what so it has filled the gap now you can move this column as well so this is your unique column over here now this particular model contains sales table customer as well as product master i have the uh, date dimension table script ready made so i can use the date dimension table creation here i'm not going to waste here in uh, explaining how we can create the date table i have explained in the video just go and check in the dax playlist now for now i will just use the script that i already copied so this is the script so you need to mention it uh, the start date and how many days you need we are going to populate i'm going to populate 10 years that is 36506 is the one year and into 10 is 3650 and duration how it should increment each day it should increment so that is how i populated then this becomes my dim date so now i have um, 
sales customer product team date these are my different dimension table let's name it properly dim customer sales and then here dim product master okay and dim date okay let it be uh, like that we will give a space as well for it let the sales be like that and it is we can rename it as fact later now once you give a close and apply you will see like um, the different dimensions appearing over here come on be with, be with me it's loading okay there you go now this date or sale date to be linked here so that you can analyze also you can link the product table like this right so how you can able to create this relationship that you already aware i mean if you are not aware just watch my how to create what is the main purpose of creating a relationship so now you can see instead of analyzing only the sales table right you can navigate from here to here i mean to say you can analyze from the product category how much quantity it has been sold so now let us try to remove this one for now and i can include the category name and then what is my sales quantity how many sales quantities sold what happened let us try to check it out i think there is no products got related here jeans denim there is some uh, space issue or some kind of issues over here that is what it's uh, not able to match any of the records let's try to fix that one so this is how you will face the issues or uh, it can be any kind of uh, issues so let us try to check it out what was the issue over here So when you click on it, it's when you when you click on this, the product you can see a small space here in the beginning. Okay, there is some small space in the trim function. Trim function available function available here. Available here. Available here. Either this can be either this can be fixed at this can be fixed at the source fixed at the source or the source or you can or you can use it at the power at the these are these query these are the some of the issues you will face issues you will face so trim okay when you choose okay when you choose the trim when you choose here over here you can here, you can click 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 so so it is so it is a uh, it is pretty straightforward problem uh, whatever it's appearing if there is no match then you will not get the relationship populated now it's loading as soon as it loaded you can uh, see here in the it's refreshing the visuals so as soon as uh, you fix that uh, issue you can see here um, the data is uh, properly populated and split across uh, different categories and um, you can easily analyze by different dimensions by clicking on it other functionalities that we already uh, aware of that is when you click on this one the filter from this column the table i mean from product master category name is filtering the data in the sales table so that is what it is happening that is the main concept behind the start schema which is the performant efficient so the main idea behind this uh, star schema is like you need to understand the fact and the dimension concept where your sales table or you can consider it as a fact table which contains the facts meaning like what you want to analyze 
you want to analyze your quantity how many quantities sold you want to analyze how much it is sold the amount the sales amount it has been sold right those are called as your fact and these quantity and amount these facts you want to analyze by different dimensionality meaning like how much it is sold by this category of product how much it is sold in this dim customer i mean customer name or year so this is what your fact and dimension is all about so your facts what you want to analyze i want to analyze the sales amount and the dimensions i want to analyze by product i want to analyze by customer i want to analyze in this year how much so this is what your dimension is so with this note let us move on to our next topic handling multiple fact tables so consider this is one module like sales module we can have a, another module in the same report okay that is what handling multiple fact tables what i'm trying to say this is sales module which is having three dimension you have an, assume you have another module called expense so you can have the expense module here right since you cannot have the same expense in the sales table you need to have it in the separate fact table because the sales amount is different the expense amount is different so you will have your expense fact table here and there can be one or two dimension can be related to common between sales and the expense okay uh, assume like a dim date is common between sales and the expense and there can be some other cases as well okay so and you will have a dedicated dimension for the sales like customer is related only to the sales dimension similarly for expense there can be another dimension related only to that so this is how it is uh, so simple like uh, you no need to worry when you have a multiple fact table how i can handle there is nothing how you designed here same thing you can design it for it okay so if there is any common dimension you would relate both from single dimension let us try to import um, the um, our expense data then we will try to understand it better let me check this expense so here we will quickly go through the columns expense category name expense state location description and amount so this is what it is let's try to load it and it will take a while i think my system is hanging bear with me you can see once you import a single table it is loading along with the other tables so let's wait for it i hope it will happen quickly okay i think other tables got loaded let's wait for the expense table to load i think there is some issues in the load process let me check okay what happened come on sometimes it happens uh, because excel and your system performance uh, based on that it will uh, struck so now we got this table and let me quickly uh, rename it to fact expense okay let me write that one fact expense this is fine so let us name it properly if caps okay now you have this table here and let us go to here what i'm saying so this report okay it's not it's related everything to sales so you can create sales report here and you can create another page for expense okay as soon as you have this kind of approach then no issues with handling multiple fact tables because your one fact table is here and there is no relation between other dimensions you can have in different sheets and you can go for it okay but what happens when there is some common dimension okay for before that let us try to see some of the uh, columns over here expense category name expense location description so this expense category expense item 
can be created in a new dimension okay keep only expense item in this fact table and you can take the distinct of expense category and expense item you create a dedicated dimension and link to this so this dimension name it as expense category can be related only to the expense fact okay so this is what i'm saying that is uh, how you can create a dedicated dimension related to only one fact okay for time being i will leave this um, uh, with you you can create from this file okay now i will try to create a common dimension that expense date okay to a date dimension let's try to create that relationship now you can see like um, i i have created a relationship between uh, the date and ex fact expense now this date dimension can filter both sales and the fact expense so that is what once i delete it let us see what impact it will have in our reports now focusing on your expense date by default when you have your uh, fa uh, date column it will internally create one date table for the date column okay as soon as you uh, have the date column here and it will create a hierarchy you have only predefined year quarter month and date what about the week number what about uh, some of the uh, concatenation between year and quarter so fiscal year those things are not available in your expense default date provided by the microsoft in this column so you can create your custom date column i here i do not have fiscal year and all you can keep adding it and uh, the script um, using uh, m query I, either you can do it in the um, uh, power query like whatever we are doing in the etl or you can do it in DAX that we will cover it in next session or uh, what is DAX everything so you want ad other information that can also be analyzed in those cases you will go for creating the relationship then another important factor why you need to go uh, let me add some of the data for the expense over here like um, I have uh, expense item and expense amount right not here bear with me i'm adding expense amount i will go for um, the da data card okay what happens i want to analyze right i want to analyze by year which year this expense happened so now this for visual okay i will remove this uh, location for time being so one two three four these four visual belongs to sales table and uh, this is from dim product and this is from order type now which date table i need to introduce when i use the date table from here let me remove this date as well okay this is very uh, important point when you have a multiple fact table so as soon as you remove it you can see the sales date also appearing as another table now when you have your sales date over here right in a filter so when you use 2017 only these four visuals that belongs to sales table since this date table belongs to sales um, table right that is why only these four visuals are changing you can see once again these four visuals are changing this is not changing because all the year contains the same value let me um, put the value as none item not item uh, when you click on it this is uh, data label none okay now it, you can see the data is changing according to your uh, filter for the sales date but this is not at all changing why because there is no relationship between the uh, date table sales date table and fact expense so it will not change so what people will think they will uh, they need to keep this one as sales date and for expenses they need to create another filter so this is not the correct way of doing it since 
you can see you end up in once you filter it only this will filter the expense amount whereas other four visuals won't be filtering because the expense is not related to sales and uh, your sales is not related to expenses so you need to have in order to avoid such scenarios you need to analyze uh, measures from different fact tables you will create a common dimension here so this is where this dimension plays very important role but once you relate this one okay then you relate expense data also here okay then instead of using separate uh, sales date and expense date you can use a date from your date table over here right i i, I will remove this date i will remove expense date instead i will use the date from the date table so you can see i have generated uh, this date table with uh, huge uh, data that is 10 years data let it be now when you click on it you can see the entire visual the online and the entire the sales table also filtered and the expense table also filtered this is why you need to have a proper star schema where this star schema belongs to sales and this is also considered as a star schema only so this is how you will handle multiple fact tables so this in turn can contain its own uh, dedicated dimension tables as well right so as i mentioned before we can create uh, dedicated dimension for expense items so these two becomes the dim date and fact expense and expense item dimension table will create another star schema so we can have a multiple star schema in a single model so this is what the important concept behind your modeling and one last point uh, i want to highlight in uh, modeling is like um, now we understand the star schema and once you have uh, many fact table you can have a common dimension so that it will filter uh, across uh, two fact tables and you can analyze in the same page right so this is fine now another important problem in the modeling comes like uh, when you have a uh, two dates in your fact table like here you have a sale date as well as the order date so how you will relate as i said before you can have a uh, only one uh, active relationship between the dimension and the fact table so always it is connected to sale date so there comes uh, another uh, fact like uh, another scenario to handle it like inactive relationship you can create a inactive relationship between the delivery date like over here it will become a dotted line so you can see here the relationship is inactive it is unchecked meaning inactive and you can see here you can have make this relationship as active so you can have at least only i mean not at least you should have only one active relationship between the table that is dimension and fact so how what is the use of this so basically like um, you are un you understand this problem where i will filter uh, um, the shop okay the sale date and the delivery date are same in case of on shop purchase when it case of online order you can see 24th march and 26th month the delivery is uh, three uh, two days or three days later whatever it can be because of the online order so the thing is like um, when the order is placed the sale date can be a uh, january uh, 31st okay assume some somewhere between uh, 31st of uh, some date january the delivery can happen on february so when you analyze by sale date the total orders can be 100 when you analyze by delivery date how many deliveries happened this month okay it can be 98 because the two those two orders placed on january will be delivered on february only okay so 
what you want to analyze by different dimensions this is called a role playing dimension in our case this date table becomes your role playing dimension how you will handle it using a dax function called use relationship meaning like uh, we will virtually enable this we will virtually enable activate this uh, relationship and get the count once i explain the dax function i will uh, uh, write some queries to explain it to you better to understand the dax function so this is what the overall concept is about modeling and to understand what are other types of relationship one to one one to many many to many i have made a separate video on relationship and uh, you can check it out those uh, playlist in case of uh, if you want to understand more about relationship so let's uh, move on to our next topic dax basics understand uh, what is dax and then we will move on to when to use it and what is the difference between uh, power query writing uh, some logics in power query and when to use dax so dax stands for data analytics expression and as the definition says like it's a library of function and operators that can be combined to build formulas so it is used to build formulas and for expressions used by microsoft bi tools once you know dax you can use it in power bi power pivot ssas tableau model and azure analysis service so single uh, language and then you can use it in many tools so this is also known as a functional function language where full code kept inside a function okay so this is about uh, dax it is used to create some formulas for your calculations or to create uh, some tables or to create some columns that's what we are going to see in this demo and before going into demo just try to understand uh, the fact like there are two main purpose we will go for uh, dax like creating a calculated column or measure even you can able to do other operations like create uh, tables and other major things but predominantly we will use dax for these two main purpose calculated column and measures so what is a calculated column so it expands a table by creating a new column right so you have an existing column then you can expand uh, write some logic to create a column stored along with the table so consumes memory so once you create a calculated column it will be stored along with your memory and it has a less analytical capability whereas a measure summarizes the data into a single value so it is not stored in the memory and it is calculated at the run time so it has a rich analytical capability these are the two main classifications we will use the dax so some of the example is like you can concatenate the uh, dax i mean column product item is one column product category and you can concatenate using hyphen that can be written using a simple dax then you can also do the subtraction operation for each row this is also a calculated column whereas when to use measure some of the examples you can see here is like you will create aggregated value right sum of sales amount so this total sales going to hold single value what is the total sales amount that is what it is right as a single value whereas here for each row it will hold different values i mean correct so you always wrap it around some uh, aggregation functions or some other functions to write your measures so this is what a measure is so again you can see total profit you will sum up the sales amount minus cost amount also another typical example where you you are using some time intelligence function calculate sum of sales amount same period last year this simple piece of code will give you a calculation for your previous year sales so this is uh, far enough for understanding about uh, dax and um, let us uh, jump into our power bi and try to write some dax and to learn the complete dax from the beginning 
just watch my DAX playlist where I've explained from the basics how you can write DAX and learn DAX properly. Now we are in Power BI. So first thing about uh, creating calculated column, I will explain uh, how it is different. As I said, you can able to write some DAX calculated column. Once you click on this um, product master where you can see here, go to here and uh, click on some of the columns you can see the column tools okay so you can start writing some column new column over here so you can write some of the code as i mentioned before you can combine the name and category name and you do some kind of uh, some operations over here right this is your calculated column and you can start writing a measure right over uh, here table tool it is not belong to one column because it belong a measure belongs to uh, it is not at all belong to any of the table itself so you can create a new measure okay and uh, this measure is not closely related to any of the table at all you can write a uh, measure uh, between any co uh, column reference between the tables right so this is what I want to say so column is closely related to a table but measure is not not necessarily need to be belongs to a single table because you can refer uh, multiple columns from uh, tables as well so you can start writing your measure here and for columns you can start writing here both for both you will end up with writing a DAX so for simple understanding let us begin with writing a new column here and um, you can see as I mentioned before name that is product name you can Swiss way with along with the table name okay an ambassador symbol then double quotes hyphen double quotes then product category category name I miss the ambassador symbol here category name okay so once you click on enter you can give a name properly actually new category okay so that is how you can mention it press enter here then go and check it out in the product um, uh, table where you have combined the name and category name so this is what it consumes the memory it has created the column over here now in order to create a measure as i said it is measure is always belongs to aggregation value so you can start writing a measure like uh, total sales total sales equal to sum of sales dot sales amount okay you can click on enter it so once you enter this uh, total sales amount here then you can make use of uh, this particular calculation in other uh, visuals so here instead of quantity i can use the total sales measure the advantage of uh, using total sales instead of dragging and dropping this measure is like you have written this formula here right sum of sales and it is very simple calculation assume like you have written some calculate and total ytd between some columns and once you drag and drop this particular base column if there is any changes to this column happen and you have used in multiple reports okay then each report you manually have to change the new column or some other column whatever wherever the column is used assume this column name is changed now so each page referred that particular column all the um, reports will fail until you fix that instead once you use a formula like this even for a simple measure like this once you have this particular uh, measure fixed because you are referring this particular calculated uh, measure right in all the reports multiple pages say for 20 reports you have referred then if anything changes this particular column is deleted instead you have some other new column they have given so only changing in this place will 
make all the reports work so this is one of the uh, very good advantage you need to use such a cases even for a simple measure so this is how you can start writing it and now i can simply write another introduce uh, another function called uh, calculate so calculate space and i can use only the filter i want only uh, chennai sales amount okay i can say like um, equal to let uh, let us not disturb uh, this measure i will um, have this one as uh, total sales leave it as such let me start creating the another measure called chennai sales so sometimes it is uh, required to filter one of the sales amount right only i need to focus on only chennai sales compared with the total amount right total sales how much percentage chennai has contributed for those cases you will write start writing the measures like this for that calculate sum of sales amount so if you don't uh, know what is calculate just watch my uh, playlist that is tax playlist i have detailedly explained for each function i have taken 10 to 20 minutes to explain it better for simplicity i'm not uh, explaining those uh, uh, dax concepts here because if i start explaining it will be more than five hours video so this will give me only the chennai sales now let me put this one here that is uh, chennai sales okay instead of uh, this is expense amount right i will remove it i will put this chennai sales now you can see the chennai sales so how you can verify it whether it's uh, correct or not uh, let me explain it to you give me a minute i'm just uh, changing it to none uh, how you can verify you can add the location filter here i will add the location filter and i can press chennai so this value is total sales is giving me the same value even you press hyderabad this will not change even you press some other filters here this will not change right so that is how you can verify it so this is how you can uh, start writing your uh, dax queries and one of the important uh, function people used to have is like lot of uh, time intelligence functions i will start writing it one such a measure like you can uh, write the total ytd so total ytd is nothing but um, uh, from the beginning of this year till this date how much sales you have got for that everything you have uh, some predefined function so you you need to mention total ytd what you want to calculate you want to calculate sum of sales amount that is sales amount then coming to dates i will use a dim date dot date okay then i will use the year end filter year end is uh, for me uh, let it be uh, 1231 i can mention it like this and press enter so how you need to analyze this let us try to get the uh, total sales in a chart like um, by chart our uh, table will be better so i will use the total ytd and i will use the dim sales table okay um total ytd so how it is happening is like uh, let me put the sales amount also here and you will clearly understand what is happening here um let me increase the values so that it will be easy to understand okay the total ytd the concept behind is like you have a sales amount for first is 5900 and second date is 6000 so you need to cumulate to total that is what a ytd is i mean it from the beginning of the date till the end of the year so you can see 11900 and what happens to third this three records should be added and show the total so this is how you can see the records so this is what about total ytd so it is like 
quickly you can start writing your calculation in order to achieve such calculations you will end up in writing um, some codes in excel and if you lost your reference this will not work so this is where the conventional reporting tools fail and the power bi is here to solve your business problems i hope uh, you got when you need to use uh, dax for creating calculated columns and app applying some dynamic dax calculations now one last point i want to clarify is like either you can create table or calculated column in power query as well so you can see the same append operation between the columns can be done in the uh, power query as well here also you can do it okay but the code difference is like um, before loading the power bi okay you are doing this operation you are not get giving more impact or um, the thing is like one last point uh, i want to clarify is like you can either create the tables using a dax as well as the power query as well the one of the best practice uh, what uh, the bi developers prefer is like push the transformations or creation of tables towards the source however is possible right that is the best practice so i will prefer if you want to create any new tables go for power query right even for creating columns the dax used only for creating your meshes that will be a best practice let's move on to our next topic reports and dashboard creation that is section number 7 okay now we have seen like how power bi reports has to be built the prior part is power query you will clean your data and you have a modeling where you design your star schema and you write your dax queries till modeling we have done now most of the people think like they as soon as they got the data they will start creating a formatting the reports and um, doing it so whatever we did is what the proper format you need to clean your data what kind of transformation you require then you do the modeling after that only you need to come for your cosmetic changes so what are the different things you we can see over here is like the ways you can use is like um, I'll quickly go through different charts over here like these are the different um, uh, data cards i mean data card is here and you have um, other data cards here like uh, multi level uh, data card so you can see you can keep adding the quantity or uh, different meshes over here okay and again along with different uh, dimension by location you can able to see this this is uh, these are two different data cards and i have explained each and every chart i mean most of the basic charts in my visuals with the uh, nax series so just go and explore uh, those uh, chart types but for now i will uh, quickly uh, uh, explain other important charts so these are some of the things you can define the high level value like you need to project some measures they can you can go for it then this is like a gat chart um, where you can have its uh, targets and your uh, goals towards your target so this is your gat and these are some kind of uh, categorization right you want to view the percentage contribution you can see here this is the typical pie chart we have used where you can see the detail i will uh, expand uh, the slice site i mean uh, size slightly you can see as soon as you can uh, see this chart this is particular casual wear contributed 55.45 percentage 
so this is uh, immediately you can able to see more than 50 percentage of your business happening through this cash flow fear so this is very good in terms of uh, showing you the data but it has its own disadvantages when you have equal contribution between the categories then this chunt won't be helpful in those cases you can go for your clustered column chart before going that there is similar chart the only difference between these two is having a donut uh, hole in the middle of this uh, pie chart and other futures are quite similar then other chart is uh, similar to your contribution dif di uh, differences where the most of the contributor will be at your top left corner and the least contributor will be your bottom right corner so these are the categorization wise you can view it the most used chart is like a trend chart for your date like calculations when you have a date uh, month column and you can use this uh, line chart and also either if you have uh, multiple measures for comparison you can also use this chart for the stacked column chart like you for each year you want to com compare the sales amount along with the other uh, measures like uh, item quantity or so two measures you want to compare or a single measure with the legend so say for example sales measure by gender i want to compare right so you can compare it as we have seen before there is some nulls in your gender so that is why it's appearing as na here so this is the another important chart so these are the stacked column chart and the bar chart has the same uh, functionality like you can have a single measure here and you can analyze using different legends if you want otherwise you can analyze using the axis you can have some axis over here and you can analyze this these are different uh, some of them the main concept is the bar chart and some of them are stack meaning one uh, two measures you can have one above the other or you can have a one measure by different categories at the legend so these are most of them related to the bar chart then the area chart so as i said before i have explained everything most of the uh, default visualization also other visualizations in my visuals with nax you can go and explore now to continue i will explain the important future available over here like i have um, this uh, properties so as you can see you can increase the size of your x-axis and as well as any customization you have to do you can do it in the y-axis and you can see by default when you have a hierarchy right date year quarter a hierarchy visual is available so you can right click and drill down so you can go towards your underneath level meaning like this is not only applicable to year quarter date i can also use the other category so let me use the category name and a product name and i want to analyze the sales amount once you put here it will automatically become the hierarchy what it is happening showing to you now is like let me have the same format so now i'm seeing the casual wear as soon as you have another column underneath your visual here right i mean you have added category name underneath your name so by default it will create a hierarchy now once you click and drill down you can go and check different products under the casual wear when you go towards the formal you can have these two items so everything is filtered and as we mentioned before it is dynamic and sometimes you want to enable the drill down this is hierarchy wise you want to see and going one level is drill down you want to enable drill through meaning like this is 198 quantities and i want to see all the transactional level records in your report that is what you call it as drill through so going one level down is like drill down 
are towards your hierarchy is drilled down then going to the details of those transaction level called drill through so how to design it let us try to check it out i will add a new page in order to create a drill through so go here drill through or sales details i can say right i will say it sales details and i will put table always better to put a table here then i will say uh, gender delivery date sale date receipt number quantity product name order type location then from product i want to enable okay so whatever fields you want you can add it over here then what you need to do the important factor is like how you want to enable the drill through on clicking on which field this drill through should be enabled those field should be added here so in my case i will currently go for year i mean category name okay then it will enable me the drill through whereas if you click on here you as soon as you see here as soon as i added here it is prompted here right click to drill through whereas if you go here this will not give me drill through because this field is not added in the drill through report so i can go and see what are those 198 quantities sold the sales details of it so once you have this one you can see the total over here that is 198 quantities sold so you can verify the details this is your drill through and we have seen the hierarchy wise drill down and drill through and one more important feature i want to highlight is like you can create your custom tooltip see this is giving me a tooltip the category name quantity and also i can add some other fields over here like um, when you click on it there is something like uh, tooltips okay um, i can add other uh, values like sales amount also i can add so along with the actual value quantity whatever you see here will appear but what happens i want to see some other visual when i highlight this one i want to see in each location how much quantity is sold okay how i can design a, another visual that is called a tooltip visual you can design it using another page okay in this new page go to the here and you can say it as a tooltip okay this is called a tooltip page information then the page size should be tooltip it is not required to be a tooltip size but it is uh, like uh, when you set the page size to tooltip uh, you it will um, give you a proper uh, resolution right even if you set the full page then once uh, you have seeing as a tooltip it will appear the entire page that will become uh, very messy so that's why you set the page size to tooltip try to define it so this is very small by because i know because the page view is set as actual size you need to set to fit to page so you can design it properly over here now as i said before when i mouse over i want to check by different location so i will add location wise sales quantity okay that's it so this is what uh, it's appearing now let me uh, format it slightly uh, i want to show the actual figure i don't want to uh, uh, show the uh, legend should be visible okay this is better now let it be you can format it uh, whatever options you want so now once you have this tooltip ready so these are two important properties at the page level one is one you need to enable the tooltip and you can customize this anyways right now you go here and for this instead of tooltip by default the auto report page i mean uh, by default it will be a tooltip uh, will be a default tooltip whatever it is appearing now even now now you can choose the report page and you can choose the page one so since you enable this one as a tooltip this will appear here you can choose this one as 
the um, page one okay i will rename it properly that is fine now once you choose this now you can go and check it out you can see the tooltip appearing instead of the actual tooltip so even 198 will be split by your different location if you sum up the 73 71 54 it will definitely give you 198 i hope uh, you understand uh, the score concepts behind uh, this tooltip uh, and um, drill to drill down these are the different uh, uh, options available to you to enhance your report right it's not only designing a simple report in order to enhance or visualize in a better way you can use these options there is some properties for each chart you have different properties one of the coolest properties i like is this shadow you can see you can add a shadow here so that your reports will look much better now another important uh, concept i want to highlight now is like um, uh, bookmarks so bookmark is a way you can um, have a snapshot to your visuals or uh, you want to switch between the same uh, different visuals okay in those cases you can go for uh, bookmarks so where that option available you go to the uh, insert not an insert i think it's in uh, this page okay for in order to do the bookmark what i am trying to do is like you can switch between the bookmark from here you can go to another page or in the same place i want to view the different visual uh, what i'm trying to say is here instead of uh, yearly sales i want to view the customer sales but you are not able to fit in in the same page okay for that just try to copy this visual and pasting it here okay i use the customer name wise okay i am using customer customer wise analysis okay but i am not able to fit it either you can increase the page you can increase the page here like click on the page and um, you can increase the page to custom and increase the height to somewhere around a thousand then you can add it here okay this is one way of doing it accompanying or uh, accomplishing multiple visuals in the same page but the smarter way to handle is like this bookmark concept can be expanded for different purposes one of the purpose is like switching between the visuals okay that is what i want to explain it here i will revert back to custom and it is 720 let us uh, get that visual back at the top then i will revert it back so click on the page page size then 720 okay now to demonstrate a bookmark i have this uh, visual here okay you go to view bookmarks okay in the view bookmarks you can I also add a selection okay that is where you will have so I will have uh, two bookmarks one is like uh, year okay another is like uh, customer these are the two bookmarks I have created so once you click on this this visual I do not wish to see in the year so click on hide then go to year then update so this is like a snapshot you will snapshot this uh, particular thing so this visual won't be visible when you want to view this particular bookmark page okay and when you go to customer bookmark i do not wish to see year so in this case check on it and click on this one okay then go to customer then click on update so you are fixing this two things fine now how to switch between these two bookmarks right so by default you need to have the default book bookmark like here okay in order to switch between these two bookmarks you can add uh, some button so insert a button like uh, right arrow i will just add this right arrow and i will say like uh, go to uh, you can close this uh, bookmarks button 
and I will say like action okay action will be like go to bookmarks and bookmark is customer now in order to view it control and press in the actual once you deploy it you will have it so here you need to come back again okay then it is better to decide design that bookmark okay in order to go back okay this one action here bookmark then here okay now when you click on this you will switch to here when you click on this you come to customer so this is how you will switch between the bookmarks okay this is where you will understand uh, the different concepts so now we have seen how you can format uh, different um, options available for formatting your visuals and what are the different visual types then drill down and drill through sorry let us try to summarize what you have seen in this session so we have learned about different chart options and how you can format your page and reports using different formatting options available then what is drill down when you have a hierarchy you can go down and what is drill through is seeing your detailed data and also you can design a dynamic tooltip as well as your bookmark concepts uh, point to discuss about in the reporting section is like a custom visualization so we have designed this report and all these charts are visuals built from this uh, visualization provided by the microsoft or power bi team what if you want to have different charts that is not listed here right so you can always uh, design your chart and i have talked more about it how you can design your own chart but it is not as simple as that instead you can go and get the pre-designed start i mean uh, visuals and which has been tested by microsoft and they have it in the app store so to get that get more visuals so that it will prompt you to the uh, power bi visuals uh, portal where you can import in this file or if you are already downloaded that file you can import as a file so let me go to here and note that i have already logged in here so once you log in here and you can check all these uh, different types of visuals let us not uh, waste our time here D directly i will go to filters and i like this drill down uh, donut chart so let me get that one in my file so drill down donut chart is like uh, you have a hierarchy it will have a different uh, uh, visual effects right uh, let me show it to you once i get in inside this file so that will appear over here once it is uh, get downloaded and then instead of uh, this hierarchical chart like you can see it is giving me the message so under this bar it is appearing so instead of uh, this bar chart with the uh, casual wear i mean th the product category i will go for this drill down bar chart so now the look and feel is uh, really good uh, and it will give you uh, some warning that is only 30 days or some some other warning that is uh, absolutely fine now you can see as soon as you click on it the structure it changes right I immediately it was uh, like uh, some kind of 3d effect the very good visual effects it gives us right so these kind of things you can add it you can always enhance your power bi reports using the custom visualization you can have uh, any number of visualization as you like but don't include all the visualization as custom visual that may impact your performance as well let's start uh, discussing about uh, power bi services and the power bi services is second part of power bi architecture where it is meant for sharing and collaboration so whatever we have seen till now it's developed in power bi desktop so whatever we have seen like uh, we have uh, brought the tables different uh, data 
from excel and different uh, sources we can able to bring and you can do the etl operation right you can merge or append or remove columns you can change data types and you can create a new columns in power query or transform data that is part of your power bi desktop then you will do the modeling like creating relationship star schema creating a tax functions everything together that is called power pivot that is also embedded in power bi desktop and finally you will create reports once you do this step so people always should remember we should follow this step J not like just loading the data immediately and start creating the reports you clean your data do your modeling properly then you start creating your reports so whatever we are done so far is only in power bi desktop so this cannot be shared to anyone unless you can email the power bi desktop then he should have the same source file so a lot of problems will be there right so it is not feasible if you are working with more than 10 to 15 people uh, imagine an organization having 1000 people accessing to the reports so the best way is to share or deploy this report in cloud that is power bi services then people can start accessing it so this gateways plays important role like whenever the data get updated in your source that is in your on-premise data then it will using the gateways it enable you to securely connect to your on-premise the cloud reports securely connect to your on-premise uh, data to get the latest data so whatever you upload it as on today it will update it right so tomorrow there will be new data appended in your sources those data has to be incrementally read so that is why gateways plays an important role here so what is the prerequisite of deploying the uh, services the two prerequisite is like you need to have a work email you cannot have a gmail or yahoo mail personal account and this is not an issue if you are an organization you already possess it those who are learning it i have separate video how you can generate a work email or login without your work email and you need to have a pro and premium license see the deployment you can deploy it and you can access it in order to share the reports with other users you need premium or pro lose licensing the pro is the least and premium is the higher version of it even you have a premium per user license as well so those things uh, it's not part of this video we will cover it in a separate video uh, post to that I hope uh, this is far enough for uh, our uh, introduction about Power BI services. Let's start sharing our report. I'm in Power BI desktop. So you can see here we have developed this simple report. I'm not focusing much on creating the report. This uh, entire session purpose is to understand what is the end to end flow. So I have created this report that is a very simple report and you can see here I have logged in using uh, one of the user and once you click on publish it will prompt you to deploy it in your report. So I will explain about the workspace now I do not have any workspace I will go for a default workspace now. So once you go there I already deployed it that's why it's asking replace just press uh, yes in your case so this report is got deployed over there in the power bi services it is as simple as that now you can see here open this uh, particular uh, report in the cloud yes you can do that you just click on it so it will uh, uh, open your uh, report in the cloud as you can see this is your desktop within few seconds you can be able to deploy your report in the cloud this is how you can deploy your reports in the Power BI services. So to explain with what my workspace is like a container, all your development dashboards inside that you will have a data sets, everything to be deployed in the workspaces. So this is like a more or less um, like managed workspaces 
by default you will have your own workspace in order to have a collaboration and sharing it is advisable to create a dedicated workspace for uh, the different departments basically like you create a report for um, sales department or some other uh, domain specific departments you create workspace for that and deploy the specific reports on that so that you can control the uh, access at the workspace level as well so now you can see uh, when I click on it, when I click on create, it asking me for the Power BI Pro license. So Pro license is important for creating a workspace as well as for sharing. Let me show you. Uh, I will. Uh, I'm clicking on this report, right? So again, it says to use the Power BI Pro license. You need to upgrade to Pro license to share. Even you cannot do anything like. Um, other formatting like export or you can do the export like um, what I'm trying to say is not export emb embed a report this report can be embedded in um, some URL or in your custom website but this is like no access restriction nothing any anyone has this URL like you can publish to web like when you click on it it will uh, ask you for create embed code okay publish so this is your code okay you can copy it this report and then go to any other uh, browser I'm going here so those whoever has uh, this particular uh, URL they can able to see there is no security restriction or any other um, uh, access control mechanism implemented in this so this is not advisable as this report is accessible if it is a confidential report you cannot do such a way so this is the only option you will get when you have a free user so when this report has to be shared to some other user he doesn't have any desktop see say for example naga has created this report my colleague who is not aware of um, development of power bi desktop anything right maybe he is my manager okay he don't want to spend his time on creating the reports he just want to access the report only read only user right so for him and i want to share i cannot share it because i do not have a pro user so buying a pro user license is mandatory for now for this demo purpose i will go for try free once you can also try it and if you like it then you can go and purchase this i think it is around ten dollars um, per month okay for uh, purchasing a pro user so now i became a pro user now so now what we can do is like uh, i can share this report to the another user now let me show what i am trying to achieve like we have uh, matin he does not have anything right now he is a new user in power bi in order to get him access right the whatever reports we have created so go to manage permission and then direct access right so i can uh, give him the access over here so let me copy his e email and paste it here and you can see this user exists and grant access okay now once i'm back uh, to the martin login he is uh, martin okay he is martin and now you need to go to the shared with me let's click on refresh there you go so he can able to see this report even he can able to do some edits based on the rights provided okay this is how you can uh, share the report with other users the same functionality he will get he can do the filtering and any other operations this is the main purpose we will go for your power bi services for report sharing purpose i hope uh, you got uh, what i um, wh why we need to go for uh, power bi services let's uh, talk about uh, some other things available here um, we have seen the deployment and we have seen the sharing as well now another important concept over here is like um, now you can see as soon as i become a pro user you have other options 
like uh, embed in a portal with security right whoever has authorized to access this report will be allowed inside this particular url and also you have a sharepoint online as well embed in the sharepoint online so these are very secure way of um, embedding your reports then the another option is like um, export you can export the entire report in powerpoint or pdf and as well as you can also do the analysis in excel as well so let me quickly download it as a power bi i mean the pdf file so exclude hidden report tabs so sometimes what happens we will hide some pages so those things will be excluded and you can also export only the current page as well if you are not exporting how many pages it has every page will be exported as a pdf file even you can uh, uh, that i mean export it as a ppt as well powerpoint presentation and what are other things um, needs to be covered let me go through the topics here so access control report sharing export is done let's talk about the scheduling and it takes uh, some time let's bear with that and once it is done we will quickly check it out so this is done and you can see uh, in a pdf format how uh, the reports will look like so this is the tooltip page that's what it's appearing very uh, minimal so i mean uh, as a small uh, image right um, and other pages appearing as whatever it fit into the page this is how you can export the reports as well and one last thing about the power bi services uh, is like creating the dashboard so as i mentioned before some people interchangeably use this single report you can see this is the type as report so they will consider this as the dashboard they are fine with that they are okay with this but uh, the 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 real concept behind the dashboard is like build a single page data story the meaning is like you can have visuals from multiple reports into a single dashboard that is the core concept behind dashboard and there are some other advantages as well let us try to create one so dashboard i can say sales monitor okay or uh, sales reporting whatever so i have this dashboard here and it is currently it will be empty so what i can do here is i can pin some of the visuals from this report into this dashboard for that go to this report and you can see a pin pin visual this pin visual is meant for where you need to embed it right so you can see existing dashboard or new dash we can create from here uh, we already created sales monitor just pin it okay that will appear over there so even this one we can pin it there so sales monitor pin so these are the two reports we have added in our dashboard so this is what it is and you can ask questions from your dashboard that is q and a like nlp is implemented here and you can upload multiple reports here and you can pin this one as well to demonstrate i have this report i'll publish this one in the um, power bi services let me put this one as well is there just deployed you can see this is uh, this report is appearing this is just a simple report there is nothing you can uh, do so let me pinch this one over here use the destination theme select the monitor now you can see from two reports i mean uh, this dashboard for two visuals from end to end uh, report and one visual from this tooltip so both will appear in our dashboard you can customize this and you can set it over here where you can add some tile or some themes you can set this is the about uh, dashboard and i hope you understand the difference between reports and dashboards
so this is fine now the another important uh, factor here is like you can do the uh, subscription of your report and we will see that one how it works let me go to the my workspace here what i'm trying to say is like i have this report that is appearing in app.powerbi.com so i do not have a time to log in to this every day and i will get it i am very much interested when it uh, comes to my email right so that option is nothing but sending the uh, report in a email that is called your subscriptions where that option is available go to that report i mean report then you can click on subscribe so here you can add the subscription so who and all has to be part of that subscription you can keep adding those names and subject will be my sales report and then you can include the some of the pages what page you want to schedule and you can set the schedule over here like uh, weekly in monday and uh, i do not want to appear it on uh, weekends so i want only on this date and you can schedule the timing as well so this is another important uh, concept so subscription is set so you will receive this report in your email as well this is one thing i want to highlight and the last part the important concept behind the scheduling is like um, you want to refresh this report based on the latest data what i'm trying to say so we have uh, this file the power bi file and we have developed this report right and then we have computed this data now what happens some data changes in the excel or incrementally it will keep adding right so that data to be reflected here so for that the power bi as we seen in this um, uh, architecture let me explain it so here we have developed the report and we have published here now the data gets keep on updating in your sources so those data has to be read from the on premise and move to the cloud so the power bi gateways plays an important role here where it will have the uh, secure connectivity between your cloud and on premises sources and move the data from source to your cloud that is the main purpose of your power bi gateway so that is what the last topic and let us try to see how it works so first thing is like uh, let me go here and click on this uh, data set so once you deploy your report not only your uh, reports are created along with that data set also to be created so single file contain this in power bi desktop it will be a single file once you publish it in power bi services it will be split into two one is a report another thing is your data data set this data set is nothing but all your modeling part etl part everything is embedded here right you cannot be able to view it once you click on it there is nothing you can view over here right so this is your data set and how you can do it go to settings i'm saying you need to do the scheduled refresh now so here is the one the gateway connection use the on premises uh, gateway so you do not have any personal gateway installed because i do not have a gateway installed so i have a gateway here but it is not running so i need to run it right now so let me enable then we'll come to this uh, sheet i mean uh, this blade then you will see it is uh, switching on and then we can able to change some data and we'll see how the data gets reflected here so i have uh, installed so these things how you can need to install everything i've explained in my complete playlist you can go and watch or in the services playlist so everything each and every concept if you are not getting it i have detailedly explained those things in my complete playlist so your gateway is all set to go and i need to log in let me log in i need to provide the password be with me
so once we key in our credentials now it is authenticating me and once it verifies our gateway will be on so this gateway you need to download from um, power bi website then you can install it once you install login now when you go to this uh, data set or uh, your login so this particular um, gateway will be enabled for you now you can see gateway connection now there you go now you can see the running on laptop this is the um, gateway you have got okay now what it is saying this the data source you can be refreshed because the credentials are invalid so you need to provide your uh, credentials here so let us go uh, by windows without impersonization and click on sign in because each source it has to authenticate using this gateway you have configured the gateway but that gateway should connect to your source for source also you need some authentication for this demo purpose i am giving the privacy level none and windows authentication and for different uh, mechanisms i mean for if you are connecting to organization you need to provide organization and based on your uh, data source the this authentication mechanism will change okay now these are the two sources uh, i have connected so those things uh, got um, connected now now once you set up the gateway now you can do the schedule refresh timing meaning like um, i can schedule this uh, refresh i mean to say like my data is getting updated every one hour right i mean or it can update uh, any frequency but in power bi you have some uh, restriction like um, in case of uh, pro user you can uh, refresh only uh, 48 times i think okay i'm not sure about it we can discuss about that in the documentation you can go and find in the internet how many scheduled refresh pro license can do okay so now you can see i can do the refresh daily and you can set the timing as well so at what time so 2 p.m 2 uh, a.m or 2 30 a.m add another time right so 10 10 a.m 10 30 a.m okay i have scheduled two times okay this is the timing you can set okay and frequency also you can do uh, on different basis weekly or daily so daily two times at 2 30 a.m and 10 30 a.m i need to schedule so you no need to do your PC or your computers should be on the on-premises server. Usually it will be in servers when it comes to organization. So that will be always available. And this schedule refresh at that particular time, it go connect through this gateway and read the data, updated data from your source and will connect it. This is why you are doing the schedule refresh. Once you click on it, let's try to update some data. Uh, I will go to the uh, source, I mean um, the data source here. So this is my data here. Let me go to projects. What I am trying to do here is we have set up the schedule refresh now. And once you go to the source here, right now you can see there are 6 by 9 3 quantity. And five seven five seven zero zero quantity over here okay now what i'm going to do i will slightly add uh, one record or two records here and we will wait for the schedule refresh we cannot wait for till schedule refresh i will manually trigger the schedule refresh what i'm trying to do here let me add uh, uh, two records here okay so what we have did so now i will increase thousand here so the amount will increase by two thousand and the quantity will increase by let us increase it to three eight okay the quantity will increase eight and the amount the total amount will increase i think this is the sales amount we need to increase the sales amount as well okay just i am updating some records in my excel okay i have saved this excel now now 
we can see the power bi in on premise so it is 6593 and you can see here this will increase by 8 so it will become 6 uh, 8 increase 6601 okay and this amount will increase to 2000 so 575 9000 that is the expected output now let's because one when we schedule this job so we scheduled at 2 30 or 9 30 we no need to wait till that time so we will go to the settings once again and we will manually trigger it so settings what happened test not sure what is okay uh, i think we went to um, the um, the report we need to go to the data set okay data sets and where is that settings and go to schedule refresh refresh history it is not at refreshed and okay i think uh, we can do it uh, manually by right clicking it so you can see here refresh here so refresh now will make you to connect now what's happening is like you can see this power bi data set or power bi services trying to connect to our local file in my laptop using the power bi gateway okay then it reads the latest data and will update you so now let's watch this report i will click on refresh once again let's see what happened my workspace intent report i think refreshing uh, here itself is enough now you can see the quantity is increased to eight and the amount increased to nine thousand so this is what the main purpose how you will incrementally load your data the latest data will get updated in your power bi services summarize whatever we seen so far we started with the introduction and we moved on to architecture of power bi then we discussed about a business scenario and throughout this demo we have gone through this business scenario naga garments and the main purpose of uh, power query that is etl or data transformation in power bi it's meant for cleaning and using merging and app and operations and power bi modeling what is the main purpose of star schema and how you can handle multiple fact tables what is the use of active and inactive relationship and we also touched some basics in dax and we once you have done with uh, etl and modeling then we have created the reports and using different reporting features like bookmarks tooltip drill through drill down custom visuals when to use it all other stuffs related to reports then once we publish to services we discussed about how you can share the reports and how you can control the reports using the settings security settings then different export options available then we have also discussed the how the delivery will happen to the reports using the gateways you can schedule refresh the data the incremental data and also you have options for subscriptions where you will receive these reports i hope uh, you enjoyed this um, part one of video this is end of part one and in our next video we will talk about the advanced topic if you like this video hit the thumbs up button and comment below for queries do remember that data is your asset